everybody, it's Zach again at NewTutor.com. Coming in, making a video for you today. I have a very special guest on my channel, someone who a lot of you probably know. And his name is Brad Scott. And he's taken some time out of his day to give me a, a few minutes to talk about some things that are really, I believe, interesting. I've talked about it on the channel before. I get a lot of emails about it. And I maybe, maybe Brad does too. So I kind of wanted to just give the floor to him and talk about CERN for a little bit. Brad, go ahead and you know introduce yourself to anybody who may not know you. And uh, let's get into the topic. Yeah, good idea. Yeah, my name is Brad Scott. I'm with uh, a ministry called the Wild Branch Ministry. I've uh, been in the heat thing since 83 and uh, going crazy, obviously, and uh, uh, been teaching this beautiful language since then and so forth. And, and what I generally do in my uh, study series is relate uh, the Bible and the Hebrew language to the things that are going on in the world of science whether that be biology or chemistry or, but it, it, my love, of course, is, is physics, so forth. I'm not a, I'm not a physicist, although I play one on TV, uh, <laughs> so to speak. But um, that, uh, that may be something that we want to uh, uh, talk about this session is, is how I relate, especially to the young people, Zach. Uh -huh. The idea is, uh, you know, the, the, the young people who are in uh, junior high, high school, getting into higher institutions of education that are designed to remove them from their faith, whatever that faith may be, whether it's Hebrew roots, Christianity, whatever, right. the whole system's designed to remove them from that. So I started a, a series, uh, I don't know, maybe 10, 11 years ago now called the Area 51 series. And it, it's not about that plot of land in Nevada, but it's about subjects that, that we're going to talk about today that aren't the usual biblical subjects. They're, you know, not, not the usual, you know, uh, two house Israel Judah kind of thing, and um, and the first series dealt with uh, inside of you molecules DNA so forth. The second series dealt with dark energy and dark matter, which is related to mm -hmm. what we're going to talk about today. The third series is uh, is all about is called the God particle, and that came out in 2010. And the focus was to show how the Bible's already given us a lot of information on the God particle, what the God particle really is. And uh, in, since that time, in the last five years, since they supposedly have been able to uh, smash these atoms and protons and smaller subatomic particles into smaller weird stuff, so forth, it's taken on a whole new um, direction now, uh, primarily based upon Revelation chapter 9. Right, right. Now, uh, CERN, if you don't know, folks, is basically a town in Switzerland, and they are conducting experiments there. I believe it's a 17-kilometer, no, 17, yeah, 17-mile, 17, 17 17-mile, 27-kilometer ring, and that yeah. they are they are experimenting and smashing protons together with. And so, what is this? How, link it to Revelation 9 for us. Okay. Well, let me let me just go here real quick and read just the first couple of verses. Uh, of Revelation 9, and then we will, uh, uh, if I can find Revelation for some reason, it's the last book, is <laughs> uh, Revelation 9, let's just read the first couple of passages, and everybody will get the gist of what's taking place here. Uh, Revelation 9, verse 1, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven upon the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened, that's our key word, uh, the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them were given power, uh, I'm going to talk about the concept of force here if we get that far, as the scorpions uh, have power. So that's going to be kind of our biblical verses that we're going to be focusing on, even though I'm going to suggest to you, don't know if I have time to do it uh, today, that these concepts and these words that are used today are already there uh, in the beginning mm -hmm. and so forth. And, and maybe if we have time, well, we'll get into those things as well. So this is, this is a, a very serious thing, Zach. This is something that, that Stephen Hawking and Neil deGrasse Tyson, who is a very well-known physicist in our universe, no believers in God, Okay, atheists and so forth, the terms that they both use to describe what's going on there right now is that this will open up the gates of hell. And th that's terms they used. I didn't, I'm not paraphrasing. No, no, things. yeah, you're so right. You're actually, totally right. That's, yeah. I, that's, what, that's what I've heard from them, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so is, this is an interesting subject, to say the least. Right, so one of the things I, I, I really caught on to what you were saying, I think this was in San Diego, was you were talking about the Bible in perspective of the Father and His commandments always creating life. And yeah. 
and this, what they're doing here, the whole Shiva thing, this destruct it's all about destruction and death. Now, can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, uh, the principle that I, laid, that I laid down in San Diego, which is currently what I've been talking about for about a year now, is called Good But Not Very Good. And the principle involves the opening chapters of Genesis, which the last time we were told was where the end is. And, uh, and, and these things are in the opening chapters of Genesis, this concept of something being good, but yet not very good because it's not completed the cycle of life. And how if you could take all the words of your Bible and sum them up into one, that would be life. Uh, as far as God is concerned. If you could sum up all the words about the bad guy, it would be death. And so we got this, you know, choose life, life and death kind of struggle thing going on. And so we have this, this chok, which is the word you would use in Hebrew, chok, power, strength, energy, and so forth, that comes straight from God from the very beginning, now being messed with by the bad guy and, and, and all those concerned in the end with respect to what's going on underground in Geneva, a city I've uh, been to many times. Uh, every time I go to Switzerland, I, I go there. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm standing underneath the Shiva thing or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but they, won't, they won't let you in, of course, but uh, yeah. they'll let you stand there. <laughs> and, and so it's, it's, it's a life and death thing, uh, once again. Um, the, the, the idea that they're messing around with energy that is not just something that can cause the Nepal earthquake, which many people, including myself, believe that's exactly what happened April 25th, is that uh, within 11 seconds of releasing this beam dump uh, back, in the, back in those days when they revved the whole thing back up again, then uh, thousands of people are killed in an earthquake, and that's just a little, ta that's just a little short dumping of beans into a cavern. Uh, at the end end of this thing, and look what happened. So they're messing with this stuff, and it's it's the only thing you can think of that can completely destroy everything, universe, Earth, everything. Right, right. So it's, it's not a. It's, it's, what we're looking at, I guess, is the basically the uh, uh, something from hell being opened up, a doorway being created. What some of these secular scientists have talked about being a doorway, and there was a video that I showed to my fellowship, where one of the scientists said, "I want to be God." He says, if you, want, if you don't want to be God, fine. You don't have to be God. But if you get in the way of me wanting to be God, there's going to be problems. Right. And, and that's what they're trying to do there. Yeah. They'll, they'll come right out and say, uh, very few of them say God, but they use uh, similar terms and so forth. But if you, if you were to talk uh, to, to several of these so-called scientists, they would tell you that we're messing around with stuff. We're trying to find. Of course, they're going to tell you it's for a good reason to discover the origin of life, which will help us uh, cure disease and stop wars and all that kind of stuff, nonsense. Okay, the whole idea is that they're, that, that's exactly what they're doing. It's, going, it's, it's like setting themselves up to be God. And so the whole idea, of course, is that whatever this energy is, whatever this Higgs boson is, uh, this, this particle uh, is, it is the reason for the whole universe coming together. And so they understand from their, from their godless point of view that if they can control this, then they, they're, they're God. I mean, uh, they, they you move over, you know, you've met your match kind of thing. So that's that's the bottom line of all this is to be God or little right. gods. Right, right. And so for, for people like us, you know, I, I go through here and, and I, I show people this and people get this doom and gloom mentality. This mm -hmm. fall, September, oh, my gosh, we're all going to die, is, you know, and, and they get depressed. And I mean, where is the where is the the word of hope, I guess, in all this, because that's one of the e biggest emails I get on, on that topic is, you know, Zach, you're just full of, this is a lot of yeah. downer. Give, you know, give me some upper here. What's, what's the good news? Yeah. Well, the good news, of course, is that many times throughout the scriptures, uh, we are told that ultimately this all comes from God. That, uh, and, and there's passages in the book of Isaiah, which talks about their power, but yet they don't have power. And it's the power of God that's going to overwhelm them and these are in, this is in Isaiah and the book of Jeremiah, which I had I probably do here have the quotes it's in here somewhere, because I I struggle with this too. I struggle with well, do, do I want to participate in adding more fear uh, to the people out there? Uh, where's that fine line between uh, information and scare tactics or fear or send, uh, send people plummeting into a we, well, we might as well just get tattoos and watch Miley Cyrus videos the rest of her life. Uh, what's the point? So for, uh, I, I, I don't want to send people in that direction either. But at the same time, it's like anything else in the Bible. Do you want to be prepared and know what's, what's going on? How do you fight an enemy if you don't know who the enemy is? Uh, we're not just supposed to lay around helpless 
in the last days either. The question, the ultimate question would be, well, what can you and I do about these guys filling around with uh, energy like we have no concept of uh, in, in, a, in a place called Geneva, what can we do? Well, the main thing we can do, of course, is, is, is focus on all those passages that tells us that we will overcome. God will overcome all these things. They will not take you, take you out, if you will. And the second reason is that we have a focus because prayer changes things. We, we have a focus uh, that we can all agree agree on that we need to stand against. We are dealing with these things that, that are in spiritual wickedness and high places and so forth. I'm talking about dark energy and dark matter and things like that as well. And we have the ability, especially when, when, when we're together, you know as well as I do that yourself, me, Rico, Eddie, Bill Clyde, we're all focusing on unity a lot uh, these days. And so we have no idea. Uh, let me give you an idea real quick. If we can capture the energy in one tree, one single tree that would power the the city of Oregon, uh, Portland, Oregon, uh, for every single house, 24/7 for 10 years. Just the power of one or the energy contained in one single tree. And if at the days of a tree, so are the days of my people. So if we're compared to trees, can you imagine what all of us together can do mm. in these last days? to stand against these things. So we need more than ever, with an understanding of these things, that we need to be one in order to battle these things that are happening in the last days. Yeah, well, there's, just, there, there's a lot of arguing over silly things like, you know, the you know when the moon starts and when the Shabbat starts and, you know, it's just, it's kind of ridiculous, but, you know. Um, well, so what about, uh, what about the Area 51 series? Tell me more about that. Um, by the way, there's a, 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 hopefully, I'm taking three months off. This is the first time I've ever done this uh, since, uh, since uh, the ministry started and got on the road doing this, because as you well know, this is just crazy. I mean, you, you, yeah. you turn down more than you can possibly do. And so this is the first time I'm taking three months off because, you know, you publish or perish, you know, kind of a thing. And so one of the things I'm focusing on is the fourth Area 51 series, which is going to deal with the uh, zero point energy and a lot of things like that. Uh, an electric universe, a plasma universe, rather than the typical particle physics universe and so forth. Uh, but w once again, the series is designed mostly for for young people because they're the ones that are in school studying these things right now. They're the ones that are going to be had the people doodles scared out of them, if you will, uh, by their professors and their teachers at the same time saying this and at the same time teaching them that there is no God. And we're all left at the at, at the uh, will and so uh, so forth of of the you know atheistic scientists and so forth in the world. So that series is designed to focus on the hard sciences, not the softer sciences, but the hard sciences. Because I believe with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength, Zach, that that the Bible and and even revealed to the Hebrew language is in perfect harmony with the hard sciences, the things we know about the mechanics of how our universe works. Mm. So that's the purpose of it. Absolutely. I don't know how the Area 51 thing got started. It just kind of grew. <laughs> well, you know, I've always been kind of uh, drawn to some of the paranormal type stuff, you know, when it comes to Christianity that most pastors won't touch with a 10 foot pole. And and so I, I like I like these kinds of things. And especially looking at science, I was teaching creation science for a long time, creation versus evolution in the Baptist church before I found Torah. And mm -hmm. so that was a hot topic, you know, of, of mine. And so, um, yeah, I love that stuff. But, um, yeah, so on the CERN thing, what's the, do we know what's next? I mean, do we know what's coming up? On I mean, everyone's talking about September. What do you know about that? Yeah, well, it shut down for a couple of years after they supposedly were able to, let, let me explain just for a second uh, what the whole thing is all about as far as the public is concerned. What the whole thing is all about is that they're trying to discover the origin of life. They believe that there's this subatomic particle, a boson, so forth, as opposed to a fermium and so forth, that uh, is, gathers mass, that, that produces mass in the universe. In other words, mass being where do, where do all the elements come forth from? Where does hydrogen and, and uh, carbon and nitrogen, all the fundamental elements in the universe, which we all know are already there, you can't create any of the elements of the universe. They're just there. Nobody can make a, a lead atom or a carbon atom. So since you and I right now, we are carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen and so forth, well, those are all atoms. And in, in those individual atoms, there's no life in an, in, in an individual atom. So the question is, where did life come from? How do they all get together? Well, there's this particle called Higgs boson and so forth, the God particle, that if they can find it, 
they will discover the origin of the universe and they will be gods, as we said earlier. See, be, be, but what you have to do, since you can't just say pull and shoot an atom, okay, and you can't find the world's smallest knife and cut it in half, how do we know that inside the atom are protons and neutrons and electro electrons because no one's ever actually seen an atom, even with the strongest microscopes? So the idea is to get into it. Well, since you can't see them, they accelerate them to a particle accelerator, 17 miles, if you will, 100 meters underground, and they accelerate it long enough for them to smash into each other. And if they smash into each other, then they can see the subsequent results. Now, that's what they're trying to do. What happens, however, you've heard of the atomic bomb splitting the atom, all those things we heard when we were in school, when we were young and so forth. What happens, of course, is that when these things happen, it creates what some say is four times the total energy of the universe, of everything in the universe, excuse me, on, on the earth, uh, not the universe, four times all the energy on the earth in one trillionth of a trillionth of a second, okay? This happens, and so therefore, what's interesting, the reason why they can't capture it, Zach, is because as soon as it makes its appearance, it quickly, it has a half-life of a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second, <laughs> which is fascinating because they believe all matter came forth from this. And we talk about, you know, how do, how do you explain, if, if the universe is only six to 10,000 years old, which is what I believe, uh, how do you explain billions and trillions of half-lives and so forth when the source of everything it comes forth from has a half-life of a trillionth of a trillionth of, you know, of a second yeah. and so forth. So it, it gets a half-life, it, it decays and so forth, and they can't capture this little hidden particle. And so obviously the danger in it is releasing all this energy all at the same time because – Energy in the Bible is work, and so forth. That's what energy basically is. And when you take that word back into the Old Testament, you have the works of God trump everything uh, in the universe. And that's that same word, the energy uh, of God, if you will, is the source of where all this comes forth from. They're only trying to tap into these things. But there are also places, for example, they believe they're going to open a portal, as you well know. Now, the word for portal in, in Hebrew is patach, there's two words primarily, sha'ar, which is gates, okay, the gates of hell, that's a portal, mm -hmm. and patach, okay, and that's the word opening there in Revelation 9 that we read earlier, and so they call it a portal, that in this portal, since they bagged the Big Bang idea 10 years ago, because all the evidence is, is against Big Bang theory, okay? So they, they're going with a multi-universe, which comes forth from string theory, actually. Um, the string theory, uh, people, Michio Kaku and Brian Greene and people like that, that there must be uh, multiple universes uh, in which you've got another Earth, you've got another, you got all these, you know, other lives. Elvis Presley you know, lives in another, you know, uh, universe and so forth. And so therefore... There's, there's, they're trying to open this portal, this gate, this opening to enter into this other existence. Now, here's the true and false of it. The false of it, of course, is they believe that that there's multi-universes out there, and there's multi-lives and other planets and other lives other than our own. But the reality that they're discovering at the same time is that they, now they know there's an existence other than our earthly existence. That's the good part of it, Zach, because... Mm -hmm. They have to conclude that life isn't just rolling the rock up the hill, and then when it gets up the hill, roll it back down. Life is futile. There's no purpose in it. You live, you die, you're gone. No, no, no. See, now they realize there is another existence, and, of course, they're going to avoid that and try to get into opening what many people are going to believe, the demons, that they're going to open up the demonic world, and all heck is going to break loose on Earth uh, because of that. Now, that very well could fit, Zach, mm -hmm. the the Revelation 9 scenario, maybe. So we, we, we are talking, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, let me, let me finish that thought based upon what you asked. So what happened was they did a beam dump on April 25th and then the Nepal earthquake came, okay? And now they're preparing for their next, you know, smashing, if you will, atom smasher, that's exactly what it's called, on September 23rd 
is another day when all the scientists in this world believe that chaos can ensue. And so the reason why it may be interesting to people now is because there's a whole lot of things happening between the 15th or the 13th of September, uh, um, uh, Yom Turah, and the 23rd, of course, which begins Yom Kippur. So it just may be just a coincidence that on the day that the Pope visits America, visits Obama, is the day that they're going to <laughs> Crash this the thing again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a coincidence. <laughs> so, well, all right. First of all, I have a couple questions. Well, where's the beam dump? I mean, they're, they're, all the energy, I see all the magnets and stuff that got on this machine. They're revving it up, powering it up, and then they got to, once it collides, they dump the energy or what? Yeah, you can, well, for, first of all, they're, they're constantly uh, shooting these particles through this uh, accelerator. And over, over time, uh, it, they, they, like I said, they begin to decay. They begin to lose. I, I, okay, I'm not an expert in this, but uh, the beam dump, of course, is that over time, all this energy collects in this, uh, in, in this accelerator. And so at, at, at there's a time when they reach. It'd be like taking out the garbage. You, you go to the kitchen, and the, and the garbage can is completely full. It's, it's falling over with stuff. And so you take out the garbage and so forth. Only they're dumping and I, there's no way to even. Where do you where do you dump that at? What landfill takes that? Well, out? <laughs> there's a giant cavern. Believe yeah, it or not, really? land, you're not far off. There's oh. a giant cavern at the end of this particle accelerator that they dump this into. And what, what, like I said, when they did that on April 25th, 11 seconds later, here's an earthquake in Nepal, killing all these people. Uh, cool. So forth. And coincidence. Forth, coincidence. And coincidence. Yes, that it happened at the same time. But they need to get rid of this energy. Uh, we live in a universe that's based upon the laws of conservation of mass and energy, which means, according to Ecclesiastes chapter 1, there's only X amount of uh, energy in the universe, and it never gets created, and it never goes away. It just changes form. And so when you take this massive amount of energy and so forth in this accelerator, um, it doesn't just dissipate <laughs> yeah. and goes away. You got to do something with it. It's no different than a, 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 if you got a large amount of water and you need to, to get rid. You need to get rid of the water somewhere. And unfortunately, we're dealing with energy rather than just water and taking out the trash. But that's the best analogy I can think of. Is taking out the trash. It's got to go somewhere. Well, I'm sitting in my office and I have a, um, a, a, a basically a dump load that we use for our solar panels. So, because when, when the batteries reach a certain certain uh, level, they can't take any more any more energy. It has to dump that energy into the load, and then the load heats up, which expires the energy. So, I, yeah. I, I can assume it's something similar to that. You know, you've got this energy, you got to do something with it. Yeah, it's a close enough analogy uh, because over time they just keep building up this energy and so forth, and that ends up being contrary to what they're trying to do, uh, if you will. Uh, and so they have to dump it and they basically start all over. So that's what so, they're doing September. So the earth, the earth is the big dump load. So like is the new dump load. <laughs> okay. That sounds yeah. good. Yeah. So, um, yeah. and, and so I, I looked on their website and I guess the week of the 23rd, they're having a giant gala. Uh, there's an entertainment, there's, um, all kinds of things going on there. Um, and that, but it doesn't give any schedule, uh, it's basically a giant party for the full week, I guess, on the some kind of anniversary they're having. But they don't give any schedule about the operation of the the accelerator itself, or the collider itself. Um, well, it's happening. It's, it's happened over a couple day period. I believe it will be the uh, over the it will it will start on the twenty third and it will happen over the twenty third and the twenty fourth. And they're doing the same thing for CNET as they did when they revved the whole thing back up in April. It's because uh, when you go to the CERN labs, what you will see out in front is something that's in the image. The, the, the particle accelerator is based upon the Hindu god Shiva. I, I know you already mentioned that, but I may behoove us to talk about it a minute. Uh, because in reality, we have people who refuse, no matter how much evidence there is, to accept the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But yet, whether they realize it or not, they will inadvertently end up worshiping other gods mm -hmm. and so they're not as they, as they want us all to think neutral you know I'm, I'm a man I'm, I'm a critical thinker I'm not I'm not basing anything on religious superstition yes they are mm -hmm. support the the whole accelerator not only not only the accelerator itself 
But you may notice, and I know probably a lot of people listening to me right now don't watch modern movies, but but if you go see the new Mission Impossible, if you see the new Fantastic Four, uh, I would say every other movie that's coming out these days has these images of this uh, particle accelerator all over the movie. The new Mission Impossible possible movie uh, uh tom cruise jumps into the middle of one and so forth and ends up in a water world thing or whatever i won't go into the details of that but everything's based upon uh the threefold uh hindu gods of brahma vishnu and and shiva and and shiva even though it sounds like a female name is, is a male god and he's he's the one as you mentioned earlier that does this dance he's when he returns when he's on the scene he's going to destroy the world with a dance isn't isn't that interesting okay uh it's it's called the shiva dance and the purpose of the shiva dance is to destroy uh everything and cleanse everything and renew and recreate everything so they won't believe that the bible says that okay yeah. <laughs> from the god from the god who created everything but they'll believe the they'll believe the hindu gods when they say that and so i'm sure you've seen the same videos that i have yeah. of all the not i can't say all of them but uh, multiple employees dancing upon the top of uh, these little office uh, partitions and so forth in, in the lab and they're all doing the shiva dance and in the background are movies uh of hindu gods uh doing the shiva dance and so <laughs> it's crazy. It's like, what, do these people not understand what they're doing? I mean, it's it's insane. It it is insane, and it's just another example of how really there really are no atheists in the world. Not really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's that's just a that's just a scam or a cover up uh, for for them to say we don't believe in this primitive superstitious god of, uh, of the Bible, but they'll easily fall uh, for all the other gods. Uh, of the universe, so they're 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 just like uh, some of the the really extreme environmentalists and so forth. Uh, you know, the, the alleged Ted Turners of the world are all focused on this idea of of getting rid of the of the major population of the world uh, at some point, reducing it down to you know half a billion or whatever. And and uh, this is all part of that destruction in the end. The question is, um, can man can man actually be doing this himself rather than sitting back and waiting for the gods mm -hmm. uh, to do it is is it possible through simply the demonic uh, infiltration uh, or a manifestation of these things that man can can actually do this and apparently yes we can I uh, had a friend of mine um, who runs a ministry and he sent me a PDF uh, a couple weeks ago that I put on my Facebook page the, P the PDF was entitled cut short and uh, through that, he went through a number of scripture, and he, the whole the whole PDF is based on Yeshua's words when he said, "You know, the days will be cut short, uh, if you know, for the sake of the elect." And so he examined that scripture with a lot. Of, it was really great. Was, I don't know how many pages it was, um, but he, at the end, he predicts an earthquake uh, for Sukkot, uh, a giant earthquake for the for the world over. Um, and I, who knows? There's all kinds of predictions, you know, that are out there. People predict everything, right? So there's yeah. all kinds of stuff. But people, are, what I've always told people on my channel is that I just keep things on my radar. I'm not out there telling you this. I'm not out there telling you that. I'm not setting dates. I never do that. But when yeah. something comes up, when I hear something that seems to appear to go along with Scripture, I keep it on my radar and I share it with you. And then right. and I leave it at that. So yeah. let's just say that there is a there's a thing that kicks off for Yom Kippur. Uh, they power this thing up on the 23rd, and we have Sukkot uh, a number of days later, five days later, that it kicks off. And at some time during after this power up, they've got to do a dump, right? Yeah, it's uh, at some time uh, uh, after that. I, I don't know that there's a certain period of time, but after a while, they need to get rid of that energy. Okay. All right. So how long after they do their thing does that happen? Because that get, kind of could coincide pretty close. Yeah, well, when they did the uh, – now, the, the powering up for the, for the Atom Smasher and so forth is not the same thing as the bean dump, obviously. But when they did do that, that bean dump, which caused them to, you know, to kind of shut things down, and now it's been revving back up on September 23rd, uh, it very well could be that any, any number of short days after that till the end of the year, they could do another one of those, uh, another one of those dumps. Oh. And so it could it could happen the twenty it could happen the first day of Sukkot, it could happen during the midst of Sukkot, whatever it is. Or uh, it, I, I think it just depends. I don't, I I'm not there, and so I 
you know, I'm not one of those guys. And so I don't know yeah, yeah. everything there. I just make myself familiar with these kind of things. And so I don't know at, at what point they just say, okay, we've stored up too much energy here. It's got to go somewhere. And, and that, cause that's when it's, well, the fear, I, 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 I'm wrong. The fear is both. I mean, when, when the two come together, when, when you actually smash an atom and so forth, the potential there is, is great as well. I, I know a lot of people, once, once again, a lot of people listening to us right now don't watch modern movies, but there was a movie called The Da Vinci Code. Um, I don't know when it was, two, 20 years ago, whatever it was, Tom Hanks movie. But then they had a follow-up movie to that, which was called, wonderfully, Demons and Angels, I believe yeah. it was called. But it was the Dan Brown's follow-up to The Da Vinci Code. And the whole point of that movie from the very beginning, to the, and they, had, they had the God particle, they had the CERN lab at the beginning of the movie, mm. and they had the results of, of it at the end of the movie, with, you know, whatever, okay? And everything in between was about Catholic priests and all that kind of nonsense, but which may very well be involved in all this, back for all we know. <laughs> uh, but uh, they had all this stuff in between. And so what I'm saying is, is the world knows all about these things. The only thing... Uh, one thing that I have lived by for a long time now, and that is, uh, generally speaking, Zach, from my point of view, if everybody knows about it, it probably isn't going to happen. Right, right. Now, that's just my own personal little thing, because I I, I, I don't think it's going to – I think it's going to take us by surprise right. unless you're the very elect. But. Right, right, right. And, and I agree with you. The, the thing is that gets me is that when I, I – when I, the circles that I hang around in, everyone – people have the radar, the antenna up, and we're always talking about stuff. Um, but when I go out in the world, people are oblivious. Things just passing them by. They have no – I discern, what's that? You know, or it's just it, so, the, you know, when you think about the majority of the world, my family, friends, people back in the world that I know, they have no clue. They, they're just. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, will it take them by surprise or take us or everyone? I don't know. But. No, I, I, I do believe it won't take us by surprise. I do believe that. Yeah. Um, and 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 you are right. Uh, there are there's still a whole lot of people that don't know what an atom is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it raised a whole generation of people that that, you know, just know how to use a cell phone real well, but don't know much of any, about anything else. And it's the ignorance of the world, so forth, that's, that's going to fall for all this this kind of stuff. And so... Yeah. All right, so let's... let's. I want to talk about something else here. Um, yeah. uh, is there anything else on CERN you want to talk about? Because I have something else I want to talk about. No, no, I, I think we've uh, scared the pedoodles enough out of time. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, a couple of years ago, I got to talk to you, and um, I don't know where my notepad... Oh, there it is. Um, you came to St. Louis, and I talked to you there, and uh, you made some, You made a comment that I've told a number of people since then that I thought was amazing. You said something, and I'm going to paraphrase, uh, like that you've seen more awakening, more people awakening in Torah in the last nine months than the yes. last 15 years combined. And, and you said that to me, to, to me, the group of the people you were standing with, which I was included in that uh, a couple year, number of years ago. What about now? Uh, I, I, I think we're dealing with a great dichotomy here, and the dichotomy is that those of us who have been walking this walk for a long time okay, are getting more divisive, worse off, more separated, more divided than ever before. But at the same time, now here's, here's the difference. Um, back in the late 90s and the mid-90s and so forth, you know, one or two, you, you know, rarely would you find somebody that thinks like you do and so forth. And, but then when people did, it happened very quickly. A lot of people have a tendency for like a dozen years to just dive right into things and someone dive right into Orthodox Judaism and reject Messiah and all those kind of things. But what I find happening right now is the word awakening uh, part two. And what I mean by that is that even though they're, they approach this with much uh, trepidation, uh, people are hesitant to really dive in you know, because of their reputation or whatever the case may be. But the doors are opening and people are allowing you uh, to come in more and more places now than, than ever before. Because for like a long time, it was pretty much speaking to the choir. I mean, you just went from one Messianic congregation to the next. And so you centered your teaching and your thinking process on those who have been doing this a long time, so forth, and they want to move on. And so forth. But I would say in the last four or five years, that especially overseas, uh, all of a sudden doors are opening everywhere. Finland TV uh, and so forth. Our programs are on uh, all over Europe now, and 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 Lutheran churches. I mean, my last trip to Europe, uh, Lutheran churches, Presbyterian churches, 
uh, letting you come in. And of course, you have to shift a little bit mm -hmm. on how you speak and your message a little bit. But that's what I meant by that comment. And I think it's still going on right now. I think um, the, the, the diehards are, are more divisive than ever, but at the same time, more people, it's never going to be massive, you know that. It's never going to take over the world. We're always gonna be a little remnant, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, but uh, that, that little remnant yeah. is, is opening up more and more and more. They're not all on board mm -hmm. yet, if you will, but they're starting to email you and ask you, oh, how do I approach my pastor about this? And, and uh, you know, should I leave the congregation that I'm in? And I always tell them no. I said, because the day that the, the day that you don't have to ask me that is the day you should go. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> in other words, should be, there will be no doubt in your mind. <laughs> okay. You don't have to ask Zach or Brad what he yeah. thinks is worth. You'll say, I got to get the heck out of here, you know, and then that's the way it'll happen. Yeah. And so that's still going on today. I still agree with that statement today. Yeah. 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 I've, yeah, kind, yeah. Of, I've kind of wondered yeah. just how that all works oh, and, and to see, you know, the way I can't I get so many emails now. I can't answer them all. Yeah. Um, um, and, yeah. uh, so I wonder, so I often I, wonder about that when I heard you say that, you know, hey, what's it like today? What, what, I wonder what he's going through today because you're traveling more than I think anybody I know and seeing well, that's some of these groups. Like I said, that's fixing the end here for the next few months so I can yeah. stay home and yeah. get some stuff done. But it is it is true that the labors are few, and, and that's why uh, – uh, uh, that's why I've been people like Chris Knight and okay, and and helping to get Matthew and uh, Von Der Rails and so forth on, in these various places to bring up the next generation of people because uh, the Montes and the Brads and the, and so forth are getting older, yeah. you know. Yeah. And uh, even Rico is getting to be an old fart. You know, <laughs> Hope you don't have to X that out of the conversation. But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, joking yeah. with him in uh, San Diego about that about. Yeah, 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 the old farts. But yeah, uh, yeah. so um, yeah, this is very cool. I'm really excited. You guys, you've got to come on, and uh, I always look yeah. forward to. I was able to talk with uh, the organization in California. The girl, its names escapes me. That's doing all the agriculture with the youth. And oh yeah, the kid program, growing and tour. Yeah. Yeah, growing and tour. That's right. And uh, they came out to our homestead, and we had a lot in common just being able to talk about um, just how things grow and how how you know. Yeah having a having garden a and, and watching the trees and the insects come come alive in the spring and it's the Torah so much so, much, so yeah. awakens to you when you can do those things and that's one of the best I've had the best time being able to have this I don't know how much our homestead videos or not uh, but we have a homestead channel it's called an American and uh, we do just homesteading and but you know I have four perspectives it's amazing it's amazing to see. I'm so proud Proud to be to be uh, associated with Brian and, and and John and the rest of them. Very, very proud to be part of it. Very proud to be part of it. Get help get the thing off the ground and then the focus of it and and uh, and. I think, I, I think I we should do more of that. I mean, really, I mean, if you're going to make the Torah come alive for people, you got to get out into the creation and that's it. That's right. And, you know. So, yeah. Get to get Got to get out of the cyber world and get out there in the ground and the dirt and the. The birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Hey, hey, Brad. Listen, I really, I really appreciate you coming here and, and talking with me about the certain thing because I, I had a lot of emails on this one. I did a video a few weeks back and uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna reach out to Brad and I'm gonna see if I can get him on my channel and talk about it a little bit. Anytime, my friend. I hope to see you soon somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, guys. Let's get you down to Florida. Let's get you down to Florida. Let's go to Florida. Let's get you down to Florida at the at the next conference. I'll be. No, actually. The next conference I'm doing is, is a Wild Branch Praise Conference in Oklahoma City uh, with Monty and Bill and Jimmy Black and people like that. But uh, you, it would really be good to get you down into the um, Rivers in the Desert uh, Conference in, uh, in Florida. So if you're open for that, uh, I'm going to stick in a, a good word, okay? Absolutely. Yeah, that would be great. And, you know, I used to live in Florida. I love like, a lot of people, friends in there. So, yeah, absolutely. That'd be great. Yeah. Really Thanks. appreciate you coming on the channel. All right, guys, we'll leave it at that. Go home. Shalom, shalom. Thanks. Shalom.